peachydragon.com. Happy creative stuff. Hey, and welcome to another exciting episode of Happy Creative Stuff. So in this video, we're going to talk briefly about lighting. Professor? What's the matter? Cool. So I'm quite happy with how the lighting turned out. We've got this gorgeous soft lighting going on. It looks very professional. So I used some very basic settings to do this. Let's just look at what I did. Firstly, I used Mental Ray Area Omni Lights because they've got a nice uh, feature where if you look at all the parameters of the light you find these area light parameters and on here you can say whether it should show up when you render or not which might be nice and you can change whether it's a sphere or a cylinder and then you can actually change the size if it's a sphere you can change the radius so you can see what size it would be and if it's a cylinder let's look at that one you can change the radius and the height so let's make that a long thin light just just so you can understand how it works. So that can show up or not, but the nice thing about it is when you've got a big light, it gives off a very nice um, soft luminance. And I'm going to show you an example in a moment. Actually, let me quickly pull that up now and show you while I'm at it. Oh, not that window, this window. Okay, so this is what it would look like with only the two lights. This is rendered at a lower resolution of a lower sampling, would I say. So the edges of the shadows are a bit rough, so just ignore that for now. When you do a final render, you do it at higher quality and it all sorts that out. It sorts all of that out. So the second thing I did to go from that to this is I added um, global illumination. So when you go to rendering, render setup, uh, environment, excuse me. First you set up your environment. I used the global illumination enables light to bounce off things and to illuminate your scene through the environment map. So I went to the environment and I used a specific image. Uh, okay, I'm not going to open it now. I'll show you which one I used in the end. I used an image that looks like this. I found this online, but because it gets stretched a lot when you set it up, it actually needs to be larger. So I put it in Photoshop, enlarged it and blurred it so it wouldn't look too weird in the background. And then I also in Photoshop, I moved it over 50% and then blended the two halves together so that you wouldn't get this obvious scene in the background when you do your renders. Now in a lot of the final videos I simply edited out the background with an alpha map but if you want to keep the background this is a good thing to keep in mind. Um, in the final render you can see the background I believe. Let's have a, you know, instead of me just saying I think so, let's actually have a quick look and then we'll know for sure. Professor? There we go, you can see the background in this one. Background is showing there all the way, especially when the camera turns, you'll be able to see where it is. Okay, back to this. So to set up your global illumination, uh, let's look at it, rendering, render setup, I believe is what I'm looking for. Oh, why can't I, okay. If you can't, it is in the menu, but if you can't find it, just click on the little kettle with the gears, the cog there. Okay, there we go. So in common settings, make sure that right at the bottom in assign renderer, you've got NVIDIA Mental Ray selected. And then in your global illumination settings, make sure that global illumination in direct diffuse is actually. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, tell us what you think, click the like button below. Otherwise you can send us Follow us and send us messages on our Facebook pages. We've got two of them, our Twitter, the Instagram, the YouTube channel, or our traditional websites, if you like that kind of thing. This video is awesome. PeachyDragon.com Happy creative stuff.